When Bikini Bottom is captured by humans, SpongeBob will use his new powers together with his friend Sandy to rescue all the inhabitants trapped in the terrible dome. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Saving Bikini Bottom, the Sandy Cheeks movie, from 2024. Sandy Cheeks is a Texas-born squirrel who has always been passionate about marine biology. A few years ago, the rodent was sent by a research laboratory to live at the bottom of the ocean and chose Bikini Bottom as her new home. Since then, she has made many friends and now has more time to devote to science, which is her true passion. As a former resident of Texas, Sandy also enjoys playing the guitar and has built a robotic horse to help her get around town more quickly. One of her best friends is a sea sponge whose favorite hobby is hunting for jellyfish. One day, while SpongeBob is trying to show off his new hunting trap, a huge machine invades the ocean. When she realizes that her friend is in danger, Sandy tries to help him escape and they both get on Sparky's back to fly away. However, before the trio has a chance to escape, the robot horse ends up being cut in half by the machine and all the residents of Bikini Bottom panic when they realize that their town is being crushed. During the attack, several cracks appear in the ground and the fish that live there begin to fall into the fissures. After the attack, the entire Bikini Bottom is brought to the surface and only Sandy and SpongeBob manage to escape. When he notices that customers are leaving his restaurant, Mr. Krabs realizes the seriousness of the situation and begins to despair while Squidward quietly reads his book. Thanks to the earthquake caused by the attack, Patrick ends up dropping his ice cream and is furious. In the end, Plankton is the only one who is happy about the destruction of the city, as he has been waiting for many years for the right moment to take revenge on the residents of Bikini Bottom. Seeing his best friends being taken away, SpongeBob begins to cry and Sandy discovers that the company responsible for kidnapping her friends is a Texas marine biology laboratory called Boots. Terrified, the squirrel realizes that this is the lab she works for and decides to call Kyle and Phoebe to find out what's going on. When she tries to contact her co-workers, she discovers that Boots is now under new management, as it has been sold to Tsunami Water Parks. When she sees SpongeBob bursting into tears at having lost everyone he loved, Sandy tries to calm him down and claims to know where Bikini Bottom has been taken. However, to get her friends back, she'll need all the help she can get. When he finds out he's on his way to Texas, SpongeBob gets excited and accompanies Sandy to a volcanic fissure. The squirrel intends to use that water pressure to gain enough propulsion to propel them to the surface. After picking up two shells, the pair jump into the crevice and start surfing until they reach the surface. However, the pressure of the water is so great that the two friends end up above the clouds and hitch a ride on a plane to get to Texas. When she gets out of the water, Sandy gets rid of her diving suit, as she is now in her natural habitat. On the other hand, SpongeBob starts to get completely parched, as he needs the ocean water to hydrate himself. To help her friend get back to normal, Sandy splashes him with the super moisturizing lotion she developed herself. Throughout the trip, while Sandy organizes a rescue plan, SpongeBob can't stop thinking about his friends who have been taken and when he sees a sausage, he remembers Squid. When the plane arrives in Galveston, Sandy kicks her friend out of the aircraft and jumps in after him. After catching him in the air, the squirrel spreads her arms and starts gliding through the clouds. After a few minutes flying over the arid Texas desert, Sandy spots a water park and decides to head towards it. But along the way, the two friends end up being sucked into a hurricane and swept away along with other animals. When they finally manage to get rid of the tornado, they fall into the middle of the desert and SpongeBob has his body pierced by a cactus. With Sandy's help, he manages to get rid of the thorns stuck in his body and then they both spot a sign. At that moment, the squirrel realizes that she has been taken far away from Galveston and will have to walk 626 miles to reach the city. While the pair are trying to get to the laboratory, the residents of Bikini Bottom are already at Boots headquarters and are trying to understand what is going on. When he looks outside, Mr. Krabs realizes that he is no longer at the bottom of the sea and decides to leave the restaurant to find out what is going on. Walking through the streets, the crab comes across the ruins of his town and realizes that all the survivors are hiding in their homes. At that moment, Gary approaches and Mr. Krabs gets quite a fright, so he orders the snail to go home. Then Patrick shows up and also has to go home after being scolded by the crustacean. As he continues his walk, Mr. Krabs comes across a huge glass wall and sees a human looking at him from the other side. Terrified, the crab runs back into the restaurant and blocks all the doors in an attempt to protect himself from all the dangers he has encountered outside. While the sea animals hide, Phoebe and Kyle try to figure out what happened to them, since they can't spot any of the creatures. With the help of the computer, the pair of scientists discover that SpongeBob and Sandy are not in town. Just then, her boss shows up and, when she is informed that two residents of Bikini Bottom are missing, 
Tsunami is furious. The woman is a great collector of sea creatures and has a huge carnivorous fish as a pet, as well as her beloved dog, Kuda. On the way to the lab, Sandy and SpongeBob end up being ambushed by poisonous snakes, so the squirrel prepares for battle. Seeing the rattlesnakes approaching, the rodent uses her fighting skills to strike them while SpongeBob uses his spongy body to trap one of his enemies. During the battle, Sandy ends up being bitten by one of the snakes and her body begins to swell. Despite having all her senses impaired, when she sees SpongeBob in danger, the squirrel gets up and whistles for help. Just then, Paul appears with his trailer and several other squirrels come out of it to defend Sandy. When the rattlesnakes come face to face with the pack of rodents, they launch a new attack, but end up taking quite a beating. While watching the battle, SpongeBob realizes that those rodents are the members of Sandy's family and is proud to see them smash their enemies with a rock. After putting the snakes to flight, the squirrels come to Sandy's aid and Granny sucks all the poison out of her daughter's body. Paul then takes Sandy and SpongeBob into the trailer and the family shows them how teamwork works to be able to drive that vehicle. Since all the members of the family are circus acrobats, they can master that car with ease and Sandy asks for their help to save her friends from Bikini Bottom. At this point, Randy asks if this was the town Sandy was sent to spy on, but the rodent says she's not a spy, as her aim was just to study the sea creatures. When he realizes that his daughter is really worried about her friends, Paul decides to take her to Boots headquarters and says that he will help her save all the fish that have been caught. According to Sue, SpongeBob is the centerpiece of her secret project and the woman needs him to continue her research. Then, when she discovers that the creature is missing, she decides to take her anger out on all the other residents of Bikini Bottom and start shaking the glass sphere in which they are trapped. Not understanding the reason for such hatred, Phoebe decides to question her boss and asks why she needs SpongeBob so much. At this point, the woman shows an advertising video to present her newest product, Sea Pals. Her plan is to clone all the animals in the Bikini Bottom after altering their DNA to make them able to breathe out of water. This way, they will become children's favorite pets and will be distributed all over the planet. After discovering their boss's true intentions, Phoebe and Kyle realize that they need to find SpongeBob as soon as possible, otherwise they'll end up being fired. On the way to Galveston, Randy notices that the car's engine has stopped working and asks SpongeBob to help him get the tools. Meanwhile, Sandy is asleep and is woken up by her mother for breakfast. Seeing all those memories of working in the circus with her family, Sandy gets emotional and decides to reminisce about old times. With the help of her parents, the rodent performs some acrobatics and spits fire to light the barbecue. When she realizes that her daughter still has the talent to work in the circus, Granny asks her to join the family again, but Sandy says that her love of science is greater than anything else. That morning all the family members gather to eat the apple steaks Granny has prepared while discussing Sandy's future. Just then, SpongeBob appears and says that he has found the problem with the engine, because there was a raccoon hiding inside. When he comes across the wild animal, Paul immediately decides to throw it out of the vehicle and the group continues on its way. Meanwhile, in Bikini Bottom, Plankton talks to his computer wife about the cloning machine developed by Sue. The truth is that the little guy spent years of his life trying to create a device to clone himself, but he never succeeded. So he decides to ask Karen to help him steal the machine from the lab, so that he can finally create an army of planktons and rule the world. At that moment, it starts raining Krabby Patties flavored cookies and, when they discover that they can eat for free, the residents of Bikini Bottom start gorging themselves while Mr. Krabs tries to stop his restaurant from going bankrupt. A few hours later, when all the fish have had their fill, Sue orders the scientists to start their research and Phoebe captures Patrick to use as a guinea pig. In addition to him, Squidward and Mr. Krabs are also taken and, on seeing his archenemy chosen to take part in the research, Plankton is saddened because he would have liked to have gone in his place. After trapping the marine animals in centrifuge chambers, the scientists began phase two of their experiment and transformed their guinea pigs into animals capable of surviving outside the ocean. The trio are then trapped inside a tiny aquarium with a model that imitates Bikini Bottom and Mr. Krabs is furious that his real restaurant is no longer around. On the other hand, when he discovers that he can breathe out of water, Squidward gets so excited that he starts dancing. However, all their happiness comes to an end when Sue invites two children to meet the new hybrids and the trio are treated as if they were inanimate toys. After testing the guinea pigs and making sure they were accepted by the children, Sue orders Kyle to take the children back to their parents and starts planning the next steps. Sandy and her family are only a few kilometers away from Boots headquarters, but their plans are interrupted by a police car that starts chasing them down the road. When he realizes that his vehicle is about to be impounded, Randy decides to take a risky maneuver and crosses in front of a truck to follow a road that takes him to the middle of the desert. 
However, at the end of the road, Randy comes to the edge of a cliff and can't break in time. Luckily, during the fall, the trailer ends up in the center of a tornado that cushions the fall. However, the chase continues, as the police have hitched a ride on another hurricane that is approaching at high speed. When she sees the vehicle approaching, Sandy decides to act and uses a rope to lasso the hurricane. She then ties an anchor to the other end and throws it to the ground. As a result, one of the tornadoes is trapped while the other makes its way far away. Soon afterwards, Randy manages to get his vehicle back on the road, but he is pursued by several other vehicles that have the help of police helicopters to catch them. When he realizes that his family won't be able to escape for long, Paul decides to put Sandy and her friend inside a cannon and throws the pair out of the vehicle. During the fall, Sandy opens her arms and starts to glide. At this point, the pair are blown away and finally make it to the water park. Luckily, they fall into the pool and don't get hurt. After getting out of the water, Sandy uses her X-ray googles to look for the secret laboratory while SpongeBob has fun tickling the bathers. Seeing a human leaving the pool, the sponge decides to hitch a ride with him and helps her friend look for the laboratory. At that moment, they both start to be chased by Kuda and end up falling into the pool while trying to escape. However, the dog doesn't give up chasing them and jumps into the water to chase them. In an attempt to get rid of the animal, Sandy and SpongeBob decide to climb the water slide and get a privileged view to continue their search. At this point, Sandy finally manages to find the Boots headquarters and, seeing the dog approaching, decides to jump from the top of the water slide. Just when they think they've gotten rid of the animal, the two friends discover that they're still being chased, because Kuda has used a hang glider to go after them. So, determined to get rid of her enemy once and for all, Sandy lures him into a volcano and the dog ends up being hit by a strong jet of water. In order to get into the building, the two friends decide to use a sewer passage and hitch a ride with the current, which takes them to the sink drain in the laboratory. At the sight of Bikini Bottom, SpongeBob feels relieved and is greeted by Gary, his pet snail. He then runs into Patrick's arms and Mr. Krabs thanks the sponge for coming to their rescue. Just then, Phoebe and Kyle show up and are surprised to see the last piece missing from their collection. The scientists quickly report the news to their boss and, when she discovers who is behind the capture of her friends, Sandy is furious. The rodent feels betrayed by her former boss, so she decides to attack her, but Sue manages to capture the rodent and locks her in a cage. When she discovers that her former co-workers have helped the villain do something so terrible, Sandy is disappointed and despairs when she sees Spongebob sent to the cloning machine. When asked why she wanted to clone those animals, Sue reveals that she has always had a passion for aquatic creatures. However, one day, while swimming in a lake in Peru, she was attacked by carnivorous fish and ended up being transformed into a cyborg. According to the woman, thanks to Sandy's research, she learned about Bikini Bottom and decided to clone all the animals that live there in order to market them. When she discovers that she was being used to spy on her friends, Sandy feels guilty about everything that has happened and can't help the look of disappointment on her friends' faces. At this point, SpongeBob is sent to the cloning chamber and his body begins to break down to give rise to tiny new sponges. Seeing all those clones, Sue says that soon they will grow to their original size and then they can be sold all over the world. Suddenly, Kuda manages to get to the lab and knocks over the cloning device, releasing all of SpongeBob's miniatures. Seeing the clones spreading everywhere, Sue runs away to avoid being attacked and a mini SpongeBob decides to go to Sandy's cage. The little one asks his friend not to feel bad, as she is not to blame for what has happened, since she is also a victim of the evil scientist. Regretting having helped Sue carry out that diabolical plan, Phoebe and Kyle decide to help Sandy escape from the cage and the rodent knocks out her boss. She then opens the control panel and takes control of Sue's robotic body, which begins to dance to the melody created by the orchestra of mini sponges. After having some fun, Sandy knocks the robot to the ground and Sue's head ends up in her pet fish's stomach. While celebrating the scientist's defeat, Mr. Krabs discovers that when he puts the little SpongeBob miniatures together, they join to form a single body. With the help of his friends, the crustacean begins to assemble all the clones, but is suddenly interrupted when the dome containing the animals from Bikini Bottom begins to roll around the laboratory and hits the wall. At that moment, a crack is caused in the glass and seawater begins to leak through. Determined to get her friends back to the ocean, Sandy uses her secret whistle to call her family. Suddenly, a tornado approaches and destroys the roof of the laboratory. Soon after, the squirrels parachute down and the hurricane is gone. Seeing her family again, Sandy is relieved to know that they haven't been caught by the police and runs to hug them. With the help of her family and friends, the rodent manages to build a machine capable of generating enough energy for the second half of Sparky, who was taken along with Bikini Bottom, to be able to fly. 
However, the peak energy generated was so great that the dome was able to pass through the Earth's atmosphere and circle the moon. When they realize that they have gone too far, Sandy and her friends stop running in order to interrupt the flow of energy and manage to return to Earth at high speed, like a meteor. When it reaches the ocean, the glass sphere begins to sink and disintegrates, allowing Bikini Bottom to return to its place of origin. At that moment, Sparky meets his friends again and is very happy, having spent several days there alone waiting for them to return. A few days later, SpongeBob, with Mr. Krabs' permission, puts on a big show at Krusty Krab and Sandy finally gets the chance to perform in a circus show with her family again. Seeing all those customers in his restaurant, Mr. Krabs doesn't miss the opportunity to make a profit and takes the opportunity to sell his delicious Krabby Patties. Thanks to the shrinking ray developed by Sandy, Kyle and Phoebe also had the chance to watch the show from the bleachers along with all the other townspeople. To close the evening on a high note, Sandy and her robotic horse take to the stage to sing a beautiful song in the company of all their friends. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.